Every journey starts with the first step, and Bazel is no exception. We're going to get Bazel up and running on our system. I'll be showing how to install Bazel on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. For Windows, I'll be using a Windows 10 system. I'll be installing Bazel on Mac OS Monterey, and for Linux, I'll be using an Ubuntu system. While Bazel works the same for all environments, you may run into some gotchas depending on the platform. For example, in Bazel, if you want to build all targets in a workspace, you would type bazel build dot dot dot. Unfortunately, this little shortcut confuses macOS since the dot 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 is used in the Z shell to navigate up a few directories. This can be resolved by typing bazel build forward slash forward slash dot dot dot. Windows also runs into some command line issues. If you are following any documentation and the commands don't appear to work, you may be running into one of these small command line gotchas. Finally, Bazel has different versions. Of course, different versions of Bazel may introduce complications. For instance, you may incorporate a new Bazel feature in your builds, but this project may no longer be able to compile on older versions of Bazel. There's a tool called Basilisk that manages your Bazel installs. That way you can switch between different versions depending on the project. Basilisk acts as a wrapper for Bazel, so all commands on Bazel work for Basilisk. By adding a .bazel version file, you can actually define the Bazel version used to compile your project. That way, if you try to compile your project using Basilisk, Basilisk will automatically download the Bazel version defined in the .bazel version file and compile your project. We'll be using Bazel throughout this course, but if you do find yourself needing to switch between Bazel versions, then Basilisk is a must-use tool. To get started with Windows, I first need to install Visual C++ Redistributable for Visual Studio 2015. Now, download and install this dependency. In my case, I have it already installed on my computer. Next, head over to Bazel's releases on the official Bazel GitHub repo. Type in the following. At the time of this course, Bazel is using 5.1, so scroll down to that release. Download the exe file. Then place it into a folder on your hard drive. Rename the Bazel binary to just Bazel. At this point, we need to access Bazel on the command line. Use the search bar or run menu and type env. Then click the environment variables button. Now to update your path. In the system variables section, search for the path variable. Select the path variable, then click the edit button. Then click the new button. Add the location of where Bazel is located on your hard drive. Now open up the start menu and type command. This will open up a command line. We can run Bazel in two ways. We can navigate up to the Bazel directory and run it, or we can run it anywhere else since we've adjusted our path variable. If you ran into any issues, make sure to refer to the official installation documentation. Also, make sure to read the Best Practices for Windows article as it covers issues such as long file names, symlink support, and other important issues. Okay, with Windows complete, let's get Bazel up and running on Linux. Again, I'm using the latest version of Ubuntu. If you are using a different distro, then check out the Bazel documentation. It covers a few other distros along with instructions on compiling from source. With a fresh install of Ubuntu up and running, I'm going to write some commands to get access to the Bazel repository.
Next, I'll run apt update and apt install. At this point, I can run Bazel. It's super easy. That wasn't too bad. And with that, we have Bazel running. Finally, let's get this running on macOS. To install on macOS, we'll be using Homebrew. If you don't have Homebrew installed, head over to brew.sh. You'll see a simple installation script. You can copy this directly to the terminal and it will install Homebrew for you. For me, I already have it installed on my system. Next, you need to install Xcode. If you don't have Xcode installed on your system, open up the App Store and download the latest version. Once done, open up the terminal to install the latest command line tools. Enter the following. Then type the following to accept the license agreements. Once you have all those things installed, type the following to install Bazel. Finally, check the version. Now, if you are planning on installing Basilisk, there are many ways to install it. See the GitHub repo for all those various options. In my case, I'm going to be using Homebrew. Now I can use Basilisk directly from the command line. And we are up and running and ready to get started. But before we even compile a simple project, let's review some important Bazel concepts.